I just bought a couple of uh, DSM-2 receivers from Lemon RX. I haven't been seeing much about these receivers, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to make a short review of them. Uh, and this is the Lemon RX receiver. As you can see, it's got two antennas sticking out. They are claiming that this will give you true diversity, which is a strange word, but as I understand it, it means better reception because you have two systems receiving instead of one. As a comparison, uh, this is the Orange RX. Lemon RX basically sell two different receivers. This is the featherweight version. It says so on the back side here. And uh, as you can see, it's extremely small. I've never seen a smaller six channel receiver. And it's obvious they made everything to make it as lightweight as possible. They've used a very, very thin uh, material as base for the PCB. There are few components and they're put in very tightly. And actually you can order this uh, receiver with or without this pin head here. So you can have it either with the pins standing straight up, that's one version. This version which I like with the pins come out going that way. Or you can buy the PCB completely without any pins whatsoever. And then it comes in on in uh, at about two grams which would be great for indoor flyers these are the two ships used by the uh, lemon receiver and these are the two ships used by uh, the orange receiver if you were observant you might have seen that the exact same ships are used for both these receivers there's no difference whatsoever and if you look at the rest of uh, the components on the boards, they're very similar too. By the way, that bright orange casing there, I don't like it at all. It's very heavy, built out of inexplicably heavy plastic. Uh, I don't like the color and it just makes the transmitter hard to install on a light plane. So that's the last thing you'll see of it. I will start off by binding the receivers to my transmitter. Let's see how that works. I'll add on a servo for testing. And here goes the power. Okay. And basically, it started blinking immediately, so it's in bind mode. And there, it's bound. So, yeah, works. Let's try the other one. Okay, so let's do the same thing with the orange. And the servo lead goes like that. And it goes power. Okay, it's in bin bind mode immediately, just like the other one. Worked exactly the same actually. And now it's bound. Yeah, works fine. Now it's time for some testing. I've connected both these uh, receivers up to a uh, servo each and some power. And they're bound to the same transmitter, which I will turn on one, two, three. Now it's on and there and there. So it seems like uh, the, uh, the lemon 
receiver had the edge here. Bound considerably earlier. Let's try that again. I'm turning off the receiver now. The transmitter, sorry. Off. Both went off at the same time. And one, two, three, now. Okay, this time around they went on on quite the same time. I have hooked the lemon receiver up to some laboratory equipment here. I've got a power supply here for that is set to 5 volts. And uh, uh, I've got uh, my radio on my side. What I think is very important is how quickly the receiver will be able to rebind if there is some kind of an electrical disturbance and we'll see that in this test okay so turn this on and now I turn on the transmitter okay and there we've got uh, a signal and I'll start turning the servo and now I'll turn off the power for the receiver Okay, die there, and I'll turn it back on. One, two, three. You see, it was rebound pretty immediately. Let's do it again. Off, as you can hear in the background. I'm turning the transmitter all the time, and okay, that's pretty. That's very good, actually. I've got the exact same setup with the orange receiver. Turning on the power and I've turned on the radio. Okay, connected. One, two, Basically, they're all both instantaneous, which is really, really good. The original uh, Spectrum transmitters have had problems with brownouts at pretty high voltages. Uh, Hobby is claiming that that is not a problem with this orange receiver. Let's see if they're right. I'll go down to 4 volts. No problem. 3, 8, no problem. 3, 6, going good. Okay. 3, 3, now the server is starting to sound a bit strained. 3. And they're stopped. Okay, so you can basically drive it down to 3 volts. Let's do the same test with the lemon receiver. 4 volts, no problem. 3, 7, 3, 5, okay, 3, 3, no problem at all. The server is getting tired and there we went out. At about the same level, 3 volts. I will be using this AXN plane as my testing platform. The receivers are held in place by some tape. To control the plane I will be using a separate radio system. I will use uh, this module from FreeSky that uh, together with one of the full range receivers provides a very stable link. The idea is to hook the receivers up to an independent power source so they get no interference from the power system of the plane. And I'll be using two different transmitters. The one on the left will be controlling the plane and the one on the right will be controlling the receivers that we're testing. During flight the small keychain camera will record whenever the receivers lose link during flight.
I just had a bit of a mishap. When I test connected these to a LiPo battery, this receiver actually caught on fire. The test setup became a bit easier since we only have one receiver. I guess I could have gone ahead and, and just put it in the plane, but I'm a bit hesitant since I just fried that poor receiver with 12 volts. I put the receiver here inside a small flying wing. 